eat better, be more active, yes. cut back on the drinking. Yeah, you know, it's you can't just be a musician. You have to be a businessman. You have to be the manager. Men want to be pampered. They want the straight blade shave. They want you know, the massage and the oil. Every family's been touched by a heart attack and we need to bring awareness because it affects our communities so much. Fraser Focus, a fresh perspective beyond the bridge. Hello and welcome to another edition of Fraser Focus. Local places and local faces. I'm Dean Atwell. And I'm Leah Bolton. We start off the show today here in Surrey for some cool hip hop artists. And then I jump on the big bike to support the Heart and Stroke Foundation. We will explore some soccer playing Surrey super dads. And in addition, the traditional rise of the barber shop. But to start off the show today, it's a very important subject, men's health. This is a diagram of the most common men's health problems. Overall, men are winning the bad health game. Men are leading the charge in, in obesity, in heart attack, in depression and suicide. And a lot of these things are preventable by just being more proactive. Eight months ago, I decided that I was unhappy with how I was living my life. If you improve any one of the five following lifestyles, you have a big impact on your health. Eat better, be more active, get enough sleep, at least seven hours. Cheers, yes. Cheers. Cheers. Cut back on the drinking and reduce, or of course, try and cut out smoking. And then finally, get in to see the doctor once in a while, just uh, without having a health issue. Do you go to the doctor if you need to? Of course, you have to maintain good health. I think just some guys are stubborn and they don't want to bring up their problems. I, I, I can, I can, I can <laughs> attest to that. I can attest to that. <laughs> so, you know, definitely bring it up to your doctor or, you know, someone just get an opinion. Is it like pulling teeth to get them there sometimes? You no, know, he'll get too sick and then he'll go to the doctor. Right, exactly. Yeah. This is what I'm talking about, right? Yeah, I know. Yeah, I will let it go until there's no other options until I have to go. Why is that? Busy, procrastinating, there's better things to be doing. Well, here at the University of the Fraser Valley in Abbotsford, hundreds of motorcyclists have gathered all to raise awareness for men's health, specifically prostate cancer. Because it's got a sidecar, that's the, the trailing link suspension. Oh, yeah. Well, prostate cancer is a silent disease. A lot of men don't realize they have it. A lot of doctors actually don't prescribe the DRE or the PSA, the only tests we have. So unless a man is, you know, vigilant about his health and says, okay, I really, I really want to get checked, it might not happen. It's a male thing. We deny everything. We always do. We all about anything, whether it be chest pain, whether it be abdominal pain, or whether it be our prostate. And it gets a little personal when you go to your doctor and say, "I want a prostate cancer um, uh, test." So it gets personal, and guys are a little shy about that. Why do men have a problem going to the doctors? Oh, I don't have a problem with it. You well, got a problem with not, it? Not, not, not. I've been to that three <laughs> times now. I'll go again. Just my friend Dave here is a survivor. He's working on a program, and uh, I'm hoping that everything works out good for him. And how do you feel having this support, Dave? Oh, it's awesome. It's awesome. And I know where the money goes to because I'm under the care of one of the top research scientists. So this is the cost of men, of men not being proactive about their health. In other words, the cost of men not paying attention to work. 36.9 billion? 36.9 billion dollars a year. And that's exactly why this don'tchangemuch.ca campaign has, if you, people go to that website, they see all kinds of little tips and, and tools that you can just do on your own without actually having to get all uh, tricked out and go to the gym. It's still a choice every single day for me. I love it. I love the life that I'm living. I'm, it's just, I don't have anything bad to say about the way that I'm living right now, and I'm just so happy that I finally did it. Medical experts are encouraging men to seek medical advice. You're watching Fraser Focus. We'll be right back. A lot of negativity going on, but I just keep flowing on and going strong. How did he do? <laughs> Hey guys, welcome.
Welcome back to Fraser Focus, local faces and local places. Right now I'm here in Wally. I'm here with a local hip hop artist and he is freestyling right now. Look in this society with a different point of view. Seems like we all conforming, afraid of the voice of truth, trapped in the system so I guess we can't be blamed, always lacking the wisdom to see that we need to change. Music's not an easy thing to make a career of. Not at all, and you know, that's the thing with, with music is that if you want to make a career out of it, you know, I, I tell anybody, you know, that you can't just be a musician, you have to be a businessman, you have to be the manager, you have to be the, you know, you kind of know how to have to, 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 to market yourself as a business as well, if you want to make any money off of it. And you know, I've been doing it for, you know, almost a decade now, and I'm just Recently, now I'm starting to actually get money from it. It's taken me a long time. Seen I buy some of them around, some of them around. came to the side, the side. didn't make a sound. Didn't make a sound. Oh. Now I'm getting ready to make some noise and then get the engine burning. I was eager to raise my voice, but I was just observing. Now I'm coming up in the back with the flow here. See, we're running up in the act like I'm so. I had something called the Hazmat Crew, which was a collective basically of a group of me and my friends that made music together. And after seeing um, James at a couple of events here and there realized that musically and personality wise that his style and music kind of fit in with the same kind of uh, message we were trying to convey as well as the same kind of, uh, you know, just the same outlook on it, so to speak. Yeah, you know, it's Jay Quasson of the Hazmat. I be in the dark with my hood like Batman. You don't even know how I play this. Well, I'm coming through with positivity as I say this. Cause I just wanna say something that is positive. And I just wanna come with my lyrical dominance. Tell me what he was like as a student here. Uh, Jamie as a student, he was 100% dedicated. He would come into the music room, which we're sitting in right now. There's a recording studio just behind you, behind the camera. Ooh. Um, and he would sit in there for hours and hours and hours um, and just work and work and work on his music, on his craft. He put up this Kurt Cobain picture, which is still here in his memory. Oh, nice. And basically, I think we had a sofa in here at one point, too, so it was a really comfortable studio, and it uh, basically kind of made it a home away from home for the kid, too. Okay, so this is the studio this and whatnot. It. This is where the magic was made. He would just work, like I said, countless hours, hours and hours and hours. And when you have a passion for something, you, you just go at it and you just don't stop. And that's where success is made. No, what you're worth is negativity in your heart. I'll be stopping you. Get some liberty and start with the possible goals you can do when your soul will get through. Start living free, but it's hard. It's an obstacle. Don't believe what they taught you. Don't be afraid to be unique or different because they all deceived you and caught you. Don't ever quit and be the victim. Huh? It's such a beautiful thing when we're able to bring all these different you know, groups of people together. Uh, because there can be a lot of you know negativity in the world and 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 a lot of bickering and and fighting over over differences without realizing that these differences are what make us human yo how many people love this community and ultimately as much as there's all these differences in the world and, and opinions and beliefs at the end of the day we're still all human and and with music Music is one of those things that it, it completely breaks down all of those barriers and it brings it to the point where we're just human, where you're in the crowd, you're having a good time, you're watching us perform, and that makes us happy, and that's what gratifies us when we go on stage. But I just keep flowing on and going strong. How did he do? <laughs> good. Pretty good? Good. Never been gone, duck. Striking the mic and I'm hype when I write a new bite like freaking Ronas. Never compete when I get on the beat up and bring in the heat. Let's go. Yeah. Awesome. We'll be right back here on Fraser Focus in a moment. I'm going to give you a bit of bite right now with a little bit of aftershave. Right, here comes Home Alone. Whoa. Welcome back to Fraser Focus. Behold the rise of the barbershop across the nation. It's half gentleman's club, half psychiatrist couch, and all self-indulgent. So that's just a yeah. 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 Harry is actually my great-grandfather. Great-granddad. Yeah, so, I mean, he was a guy back in the day, 20s and 30s, he barbered, he was a nurse in the Northwest Territories. You know, this is a service I typically get and I love it. It gives me 30 to 45 minutes to kick back and, uh, and relax, you know? So I brought one of my colleagues from Joy TV, it's Scruffy Brian. 
Going to get a bit of a trim there, eh, Scruffy? Yeah, yeah, it's been growing for a few days. Time to do something with it. I might fall asleep. But... <laughs> the brick wall was what told us this should be a barbershop. It's original, it's a 110 year old building and it's, that's how it's built. The ceiling we actually had imported through Florida from India and it takes us back to the 1920s kind of tin ceiling feeling. The hot shades is, is probably the big service that people are most excited about. Uh, had my first one, I would say, last summer, and I am hooked. There's okay. a secret. There's a bottle here. It's a secret ingredient. Okay. Men want to be pampered, and men are embarrassed about wanting to be pampered. They want the straight blade shave. They want, you know, the massage and the oils and all the scents that go with being masculine. The range of products that's out there is... Uh for everybody now you know there's it's, before it was always just like use what your dad used and now there's it's diversified product lines for you know hair types skin types everything it's great Dean tell me why there's been a rise of such barbershops across the nation I think it's just what guys are looking for barbershops are not new uh, but I would say about 40 years ago uh, they kind of fell out of fashion fell out of favor and all those guys ended up in salons and um, I think its cycle has, has now uh, moved, pendulums moved back towards being in the barbershop. And you get a male into this atmosphere and they feel at home and they enjoy it. Doesn't mean they don't enjoy a salon experience, but they're enjoying this experience more. Oh, that's great. Yeah, the gray one's really nice. I think it's an awesome place. I actually live in East Vancouver and come out uh, just to come here. So it's a pretty awesome place, great staff. I enjoy it. It's. It's a lot nicer um, over here on the men's side. Working with men is a lot nicer is what you're saying. I like it, yes. <laughs> Ooh, that's refreshing. Yeah, it's excellent, isn't it? It wakes me up. Yeah. This is one of the favorite parts of this service, actually, believe it or not, is that the really cold towel coming out of the fridge at the end. This is where we grew up. Uh, elementary school, born in this area, um, grew up here. Our, our families had a business on this street since 1946. So what I'm going to do now, Dean, is take this cold towel off, seals all your pores up. Ooh, tingly. I'm going to give you a bit of bite right now with a little bit of aftershave. Right, here comes home alone. Ah! And then after this, oh! then we will proceed to the haircut. That's a bit more than tingly. Yeah. But it's good for me, right? It is. This is great. This is my first uh, straight shave. That was great. Relaxing. Loved it. Here you go. Check it out. I'm going to spin you around. Oh, that's awesome. You must hear some interesting stories. I've been the first to hear a lot of uh, big, important, impactful things in people's lives. I can tell you that. So, um, and that's something, you know, that, that you know, you have to, to there's a, a, again, a responsibility that goes with that. And you have to just be an ear for people. And this is, a, this is where they can come and unload to somebody a little more neutral. Great. There you go. Thank you so much. You are so welcome. That's one of the great things that's come out of, of barbering coming back is it's on a completely another level. Yeah, looking good. Ten years younger. Well, the best thing about the barber shop, looking great and feeling even better. You're watching Fraser Focus. More local stories when we come back. Watching them having fun is kind of gives us uh, you know, utmost uh, happiness. Hey guys, welcome back to Fraser Focus, at local faces and local places. <laughs> right now we're here in Newton, we're raising awareness for the Heart and Stroke Foundation. It's our largest outdoor fundraiser. We've been running the Big Bike for about uh, 26 years. Uh, and what we do is we hook up with uh, local businesses. Sometimes it's family and friends. You guys are going to come together as a team. And you guys have to solve our puzzle. Big businesses, sometimes small businesses, that come together and fundraise for the Heart and Stroke Foundation. And their reward is to ride the 30 passenger, 2,000 pound big red bike. We're good to go. Here we go. All right, here's a test. What are we doing today? Ride the Heart and Stroke. 
It's an opportunity for us to build community in Newton, uh, get organizations together, people together, and a way everyone's had someone in their life that's been affected by um, heart and stroke. And it's, it's a way for us to come together and find ways to fundraise for that uh, great cause. So now it looks like you're having fun. Lots of Woo! Woo! All right, welcome to the big bike. How are you? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, we got a full crew of uh, uh, 28, okay. and we're doing a quick loop of the Newton Town Center. We have our police escort in the front, and I'm already out of breath. You're uh, wearing a fancy outfit today. Yes. I put out a challenge saying if you hit certain markers, I would wear various outfits on the goal to hit 300. We hit 320 and that paid for this whole outfit that I'm wearing today, right down to the bike shorts. <laughs> well, I'm a physiotherapist, so a lot of the work that I do is doing rehabilitation for people who have come through some sort of a medical situation, so I think it's always good to make those grassroots connections and let people know what it's all about. People, you know, passing by and stuff. Whoa, what's that? What's going on? What's I want to be a part of it. We got a lot of people that pass by and say, you know, we see you guys do this year after year, and we have no idea what you're doing. And I point over to the big uh, red bike and say, this is our largest outdoor fundraiser, and that we've had teams um, fundraising for us for the last several months, some of them for the last several weeks, some of them for a year, and this is their reward. <laughs> Statistics show that pretty much anybody in Canada is affected by it, whether it be a brother, a relative, a, a neighbor, a friend, uh, is somehow touched by heart disease or stroke. I called my wife, I says, uh, Patricia, I says, I'm getting some chest pains. I think I should go to the hospital. Now, I've complained about chest pains numerous times before, right? And she says, Spiro, why don't you come home, right? And uh, so I went home and sitting on the couch beside her. And next thing she looked over and I was purple. My eyes were dilated. So she called 911 and she put it on speaker, threw it beside me. She kept doing that until the ambulance arrived. And then they took over from there. They actually gave her the Link Award for uh, saving my life. So uh, anyways, they took me to Royal Columbian. Three days later, I was up, and away we go. And the rest is history. Here I am. Everyone in every family has been touched by a heart attack. Um, your grandfather, your your mother-in-law, and we need to bring awareness because it's it's it affects our communities so much. Stay with us here on Fraser Focus. We're gonna head over to Dean and the Super Dads. It goes up. Lifting it up. But your okay. foot goes on this. Oh, we're lifting it up. Okay. Yes. Adapted soccer is a chance for anybody to play soccer. What's your favorite thing that we've done so far? Like, uh, dribbling. It's a chance for kids, regardless of skill, regardless of age, to come out and have a good time, play the game, have a bit of fun. Joe, is this good? More? Okay. Talk to me about how adaptive soccer came about. One of the other executive members named Rob Burra uh, called me one day and uh, he had this idea because his son was trying to play soccer and it wasn't working for him. Let's get them all out. It was a bronze level team, the lowest level possible in our club and I was assistant on the team, we had a coach. And we'd go out to Chilliwack, we'd go out to Pitt Meadows, and he'd just sit on the bench because he wouldn't fit in, he'd get frustrated. Good job, Joe Rob contacted me, I just thought it was a great idea, and I uh, have a background in working with kids with special needs, and I just, I, I just love the idea. But the other part of it, though, is not just the kids with needs. Um, what we want to do is try to get the kids who are able-bodied but maybe just aren't athletes. If those kids are being turned away because they're, quote, not good enough, right. we want them. We're gonna play uh, a little shark tank here, okay? In our Indo-Canadian community, the parents don't accept that their kid is not, their child is not gonna be at the level that the other kids are. He's having a bit of difficulty at school. Uh, um, he has some learning disabilities, and uh, this soccer helps him a lot build his uh, self-esteem, and, uh, and he loves it. Not keep on doing it. Kids, all of his 
not really care about their own disability. It's us, people around us, that make them realize that, hey, they are not as good as us or whatever. Some outside footwork. Inside footwork? Well, ooh, almost got me there. So you like playing on a team? Yeah. Yeah? So have you made friends here? Uh, no. Not yet? No. But you will? Yeah. I'm playing soccer. Soccer? And how much do you love soccer? So much. Would you say you're the best? The best. The best, you're the best here. The cool. The coolest. <laughs> you're gonna show me some moves? That's what we're talking about. Atta boy. Uh, we have two staff always on, on hand, and then we have you know, eight to 10 volunteers. So I like to thank the volunteers for that because they really help us when it comes down to getting in and, and, and working with kids for the whole session one-on-one, -on -one. so it's good. Good job. Nice pass. Play, play, play. How important is it to volunteer? What does it mean to you? It's very important to me. Because I feel like that's the best, the best way that we can make a difference in the world. Just make a kid happier one day. Soccer is like a community. You join soccer, and you like play, have fun, and you allowed to go average food, noise van. So you like the traveling? Yeah. <laughs> He's been accepted there. Like I can leave him at the park. They know Joven. Joven yeah. knows everybody. And that's what we want all these kids. It's just a place where they can go and hang out. The first time we tried a cycle, we had about eight kids. We're up to between 15 to 20 right now. And the long-term goal is to get it to a place where we have over 100 kids. Well, I think we should all aspire to be super parents. And that is it for this week's episode of Fraser Focus, bringing you stories from beyond the bridge, or in this case, on the bridge. <laughs> if you have a story that you'd like us to share, please feel free to contact us. I'm Dean Atwell. And I'm Leah Bolton, heading to the next story. Thanks for watching.